This young man has been a great coach at multiple places, most notably at Butler. Uh, he's come over to Harding. He's been the offensive coordinator for the football team. Uh, he's the Harding head basketball coach, and I think he's one of the most busiest men around, which is why he's on now, and we, we're supposed to have two minutes, but we're going to give him a little more time. <laughs> that is – uh, Harding Ram, offense coordinator and head basketball coach, LJ Johnson. And we're going to bring him on right now. Everybody, what's going on? What's going on with you? All right, hold on. I got to get my setup right. You, you see, you just threw me off, coach. You threw me off. Hey, man, just like you just said, man, being busy, running around, and, you know, doing, doing what, what I know. Stuff do, you know. I know, I know. Ran, you got ran a little over. You know coaches can't never get out of there on time when you got <laughs> I'm Absolutely. Yeah, I know. I know. So first off, you know, I want to say, and I've told you this before, but I want to say people may not know, but you have a newborn. So congratulations, you know, on the newborn. And, you know, I know, I know, um, you know, they're doing well. And I know you were feeding them a lot of milk and all that. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, uh, you'll see it with some pom poms and stuff that, you know, some games coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> good deal man good deal all right so first off um i want to ask you how are you able to be offense coordinator for the um you know football team and head basketball coach in the middle of this pandemic and still coach the uh club team the team charlotte team that you do how are you able to handle all those things so efficiently um i mean i, I think uh, I appreciate the compliment, you know, making it look um, as easy as I make it look. You know, it definitely takes a lot of um, time management um, that I've been able to work on that, uh, you know, um, a lot over the years. Um, working from home helps. Working from home helps, you know, not, not you know, having to uh, travel around and, you know, do uh, lunch duties and things like that. But uh, uh, it definitely, it definitely it consumes a lot. Um, you know, it just ha got to have a strict schedule. And I think the tutelage that I've been under um, of head coaches before me, before I was able to get into this role that I'm in and, you know, how they just handle practices accordingly with, um, you know, practice scripts and, um, you know, how they stay on time and they stay tedious to, you know, their instruction that they want to give at that time. Um, you know, it's definitely helped over the years. So, you know, I've just got to watch a lot of great coaches do it before me. Man, you know, I just kind of soaked all this stuff up like a sponge and been able to apply my own pressure to it. Very good, man. Very good stuff. So, um, like I said, a lot of people know you from Butler uh, when you were down there with uh, Coach Hales for all those years. But I want to go back a little before that. What got you into coaching? And then what were the things that you took from Coach Hales that you kind of apply to yourself now being a head coach and offensive coordinator? Well, and I was still playing, you know, I was, I was still playing. Um, my first volunteer job was at Providence high school. And, uh, I was, I got the opportunity with Randy long. Uh, I was coaching the receivers out there. Um, Ricky pro had a son that just moved in to town uh, named Austin. And so, you know, they kind of tied everything together and, um, you know, was able to work with him a little bit. Um, my first interaction with Hales was, um, Actually, the Providence, this is back when the Southwest 4 8 held Prov uh, Providence and Butler, um, both in the conference. And, um, so, this is, you know, about October, you know, mid October game. And Shannon Stribling gets a cramp over on Providence sideline. So, I'm sitting there kind of jonesing with him while he got a cramp. And, you know, hell storms over there. <laughs> yeah, I guess he thought I was talking junk. And so, you know, that was a, you know, we, we exchanged a little bit of words there, and that was my first interaction with him. But, you know, as he was walking up, I was like, man, I kind of like that dude. You know, he all right. And, um, and so that following summer, um, I had a younger brother um, who was getting ready to um, move, go and transition into high school who needed a better opportunity academically and athletically. And so, you know, I had kind of put the ball down, put the cleats down, and um, – just wanted to transition into coaching full term and um instead of just the volunteer side of things and um you know i had a friend that i went to college with who was on the staff at butler and kind of put in a good word for me um and everything kind of just lined up right because um they were full 
And then all of a sudden, a, a coach ended up deciding that he couldn't, have, he didn't have enough time to um, coach this upcoming, that upcoming season. And so, you know, a position opened up for me and it was, it was actually an easy transition because, um, you know, more of the base offense that Butler ran um, was installed with, with, with Barry Shuford, their first head coach. And I played for him in high school. So, um, you know, with some of the hand signals and stuff like that, once I got in there with Hills, and I was like, oh, man, yeah, I remember all that. And, um, you know, we, we just kind of hit it off. You know, uh, it was bigger than X's and O's from the get-go. And, you know, that's lifelong friend, um, you know, bigger than just the um, the boss-mentee relationship that it, that it was at the beginning. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Um, I've got Brandon Billups here, and he's got a question for you, Coach. I'm going to bring him up. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> What's up, Coach? Where this question going? What's up, bud? Man, you already know, man, after what you did for my player last year when you got hurt, you already know I ain't no come sideways at you because a lot of people don't – you know what I'm talking about. A lot of people don't know, but – you know, my respect for you is beyond football for what y'all did at Harden. So, I, you know, I still appreciate that. Um, my question for you is, do you see yourself being like Coach Wilson at Hickory the Ridge? Do you see yourself being more just the head coach at, of the basketball program? Do you do you see you taking on another role? Because I know you. I know you can do both because I see what you do. Now, a lot of people don't see what you do with the football team. And, you know, you do a lot. And I can see you being a head coach for a football program one day. I'm not saying hard, but I think I can see you doing both football and basketball. Do you see yourself doing that in the future? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing that I've taken from um, being able to wear these multiple hats that I wear is that um, you kind of just take it in stride. Um, you don't set your bar too high or set it too low. And you just be ready to embrace opportunities when they appear. Um, the, the question I get asked the most is, um, which sport do you like the most? And, um, my question, my answer is always the same. Uh, you know, I like whichever one is in season. So, you know, I can't really put a, um, you know, a pinpoint really what, you know what I'm saying? That, that future looks like, but all I know is that I can prepare to be ready for it if the opportunity presented itself. So, you know, um, I, if, if, you know, somebody saw that opportunity in me and, and, you know, thought that I could lead both the football and the basketball program or, uh, shoot, I like baseball, I like soccer, I like tennis too. So, you know, if somebody saw uh, that type of future in me, I mean, you know, we, we'll be able to discuss and talk about it and see what we can come up with. All right. So I'm going to send this to Coach Bailey now. <laughs> oh Lord, I know Bailey watching too now. <laughs> uh, oh man, so I, I do want to ask you though, um, you know, all the years at Butler, what what interested you in coming over to Harding to take the uh head basketball job? So this this year before I took the job at Harding, um, we were actually their last playoff game. You know, uh we saw them in the first round and um when the job kind of presented itself, um, you know, I just kind of looked at the talent that um, was coming back. I, I liked the athleticism that they showed. Um, you know, when I went over to scout them, you know, I, I really thought that they could get up and down the floor. It was evident that they were a playoff team. And um, I saw that it was a lot of talent there. Um, I just felt at that time that I had did all I could do um, at the – um at the point that i was at at butler and you know um when you know you know and you know that that, that opportunity presented itself so you know i just felt like why not why not take this step because i felt if i would have stayed um you find yourself getting complacent you find yourself getting comfortable and that um you know hinders the opportunities that um are, can be in front of you it hinders growth and you know I just did I wanted to avoid that. And so um and it was ironic because that was uh Coach Lowry's first head coaching job. So, you know, I had a good group of people around me um that not only uh kind of groomed me to be ready for that role, but um gave great recommendations to um Dr. Ward 
and um, Coach Bailey. And, you know, they, they took a chance on me because, I, I mean, I'm young still. Um, you know, three years ago I was right at, at 30. So they didn't have to take a chance on me. And I, I'm just very grateful that they did. Yeah, I'm glad they did too, man. I'm glad that when I heard when I saw the news, I, I was I, started, I literally screamed at the house. I said, "Yes, yes, that was the right <laughs> choice," and, it, and it's proven to be so. It's proven to be so. Thank you, thank you. Uh, man, um, last question I want to ask you: um, Who are the best players that you've coached, either football or basketball? Either one. Ooh, you're gonna make somebody <laughs> mad because I'm gonna forget somebody. I think that's okay. All right, so football, <laughs> football, the the most the most dynamic player that I've ever got to lay eyes on is probably Anthony Ratliff. Pound for pound, best athlete. You know, some of the, you know, you can just throw something at him and it's just like, I can do that. I can do that. No, you can't. No, you can't. And, and like, he just goes out and gets it done. You know, um, no matter what the weight is, no matter how high the boxes were set, you know, he would always go find a way to get it done effortlessly. And it's just like, you know, you want to push kids to, you know, get more out of him and but he just kind of always just made everything look so easy he, he was always first in the sprints you know that's something from a leadership standpoint you as a coach always want to look for it. like your best player got to be able to win the reps you got to lead by example he he did that um you know won every rep and if if you if he didn't win it by enough you would get on him just so he could you know separate and um, I'm excited to see, you know, his future and where he continues to play. He's out in Oakland right now. And, um, you know, I think the sky's the limit for him. Um, but another great athlete was Jalen Cowser. I mean, um, Jalen Cowser played a D-line for us. He was an All-State at Butler uh, as a sophomore. Um, but he has the best hands that I've ever seen. I mean, like, they were short. They kind of round and stubby. But, I mean, he plugged the ball. If he didn't have 200 extra pounds on him, he could be playing receiver anywhere. You know, so, like, we did a lot of things with him. Um, you know, he want, he was a man in the trenches. Um, he was fast. He could run sideline to sideline. Um, he was – I mean, he could kick, too. <laughs> if we ever needed somebody to kick, if we was down bad at kicking, uh, he could get that done, too. So, you know, um, I mean, shoot. I mean, I can keep going because, I mean um, – I came into my my first year at Butler was the freshman year for Clifton Duck and Benny LeMay. Um, you know, so I got to see them grow. I, I continue to talk with them on a daily. You know, I'm extremely excited about their futures as well. Um, basketball, man, I've been around. Um, oh, wow. I've been around some great guys. I'm not even going to make them mad. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. But, you know, I, I'm just – I've just – been very privileged and very blessed to be able um to express and showcase some things that i've learned um on my on my journey with the next the next tier of talent and they've been able to embrace it and not just take it um you know in a negative light and they continue to um use um little tidbits that i've given them and you know build their own little masterpiece and it's been exciting to watch over the years. Awesome, man. Awesome. Good stuff. We got a couple comments here. Uh, Shalit3, not LJ. So I think you know that guy. Yeah, oh, I know that one. I know that one right now. <laughs> What's going on? He, he another one. He's another one that, you know, I, I've been able to give tidbits to. And, mm -hmm. you know, he, he – he takes it. He takes what he wants to take, and you know, when when he listens, he knows that it works. So you know, I'm uh, I practice what I preach. You know, I can get out there and get it done still to myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Otis Powell's got Coach LJ with only playing seven games this spring season. Who will Harding play? Um. Well, we still. I'm still in, in communication with Coach Bailey on that myself. Um. Because you know, I'm very anxious to find out who gonna play who and um when you know so um <laughs> and i mean because that's gonna be different training in, in february instead yeah. of training in august you know as it, it's a lot of things um from a coaching aspect that you know we'll have to adjust to and so you know it's just trying to put everything in place um you know hopefully we get all our conference games in 
Um, I'd be excited. You know, I like I like the rivalry games out of conference, you know, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing um, if we could get West Charlotte on that schedule. That's always a big game and, um, you know, an exciting game, too. You know, it'd be really exciting this year, too. So, you know, I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to that. But, um, you know, so, I mean, I, I, I'm i really play, ready to play whoever. You know, as long as we can get out there, you know, roll the ball out and keep everybody uh, safe um, from a, a, a safety standpoint and, and healthy, I'm sorry, um, I'm, I'm down for it all. So, you know, with them seven games, uh, you know, let's just make sure we get it rolling. That's right. And then uh Mizzle Mizzle Three watches the show every week. Um yeah. my guy LJ. So hey, congratulations to him too. You know, uh yeah. I, I, I've been a fan of his for a long time. You know, um we always talk about being the next wave of coaches coming up in the city. And so, you know, I'm excited for him to get an opportunity to showcase his talent up there at Morris i I'd definitely be tuning into them. We can get a game in next year too. I'm gonna let you get your feet wet. <laughs> all right there it is there it is um let's see uh, i think that's it coach anything else you want to say oh man you know i just appreciate everything that you do for you know what i'm saying the community of charlotte and um the the spotlight that you give not only coaches um that you give the players as well um you know i'd ask that all the players and everybody watching to make sure you don't take anything for granted out here um, make sure that your, you guys are all staying safe and um, make sure you're doing your part to um, stop this social injustice. Uh, you know, it's very, it's very difficult out here at this time. And, um, you know, whatever, whatever light that we have, let's make sure that we keep it shining. So um, and, and use that to kind of roll over into other things. I'm glad you mentioned that, Coach. That's my fault. I should have asked you about that. But, um, yeah, we, we touched on that hard at the beginning of the show. So, I know yeah, you I probably – you did. Okay. I well, appreciate that, man. And um, last thing, Mizzle is is up for that game. So, there you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> Somebody said I heard he wanted Hopewell. Oh, yeah. that yeah, That's the backstage comment. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let that go. So. Uh- <laughs> LJ, man, I appreciate you coming on, man. You know, I'll see you real real soon over at the school, man. Straight up, everybody. All right. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate it, man.